Hello again. So for those of you who haven't seen me on a session yet, just a reminder, my name is Gina Turnage and I am part of the Hypothesis team. And I've just been so grateful and thankful to see so many people attend this conference and participate in the sessions. So the pleasure of introducing our presenter for this session from CSU Stanislaw, which is in California. Please welcome Heather Ann Jager who will be leading the session titled Reflection on Using Hypothesis for Team-Based Annotations Within a Writing Proficiency Class. And this is an interactive session, so please feel free to post any comments, ask any questions. We've already posted the slides in the chat, but I'll post them again as we get started, but I'll let Heather Ann take it away. All righty, thank you so much. Um... Welcome everybody. Um, as she, as Gina had noted, I am a graduate student at CSU Stanislaus out in California. I'm um, pursuing a dual master's degree in both literature and writing studies. And so learning about hypothesis last semester was a very exciting experience. For a majority of my session, um, my link, I linked the slides in the chat. It is also listed on the presentation. So if you have any questions, just let me know. Um, for the most part, I will just get going. All right, so for the overview of how I'm gonna go through my reflection, I'm gonna start first with the scholarship on the terminology of how I came to understand what it meant to be a team-based and team-based pedagogy, as well as what is an annotation, um, cause humbly I had to relearn what that was. Then I also have the task, which is basically the assignment that I was able to create and my findings from doing the assignment and any lessons learned I had in designing the assignment. And so if I have any questions, just feel free to send them. I will do my best to check them every time, but I can't promise I will be awesome at it. <laughs> um, so starting first with my first terminology, I have team-based pedagogy, which beginning with team-based pedagogy, this term is defined as a teaching pedagogy that encourages collaborative group work from students. And it differs from group pedagogy because the permanence of the teams within the classroom. Um, in Melissa, in Melissa Warish's article, Assessment, Collaboration, and Empowerment, she elaborates that TBP has aided her students in participating in her year-long course because through their final assessment task, no one wanted to be poorly graded by their teammates. In Rachel Stein's Student Accountability in Team-Based Learning Classes, she depicts that this quality of TBP is due to peer pressure and that the student cooperation is impacted through social means. She further extrapolates that the students who did not participate within the group tended to become ostracized. And within Warish's article, she articulates that this was why she uses TBP within her course. Um, it also allowed her to see, hold on. She argues that the temporary group work allowed students to float around too often that they wouldn't be able to identify who is actually participating within the work. And because a lot of the students would cover for the student that is just floating around and not really participating. Um, and so that is why she likes to use the TBP. Uh, the permanence of the group is what allows it to be the useful strategy for a pedagogy. And it encourages students to collaborate with one another because they're stuck with this team. And stuck is not the nicest word to put with that, but they are with that team for the rest of the semester or for Melissa's class, it was a year long course. And so, TBP is a great way to do it just because they have these teams for the whole semester. Is there any questions on that terminology? All right, moving on. And so a little quick anecdote about annotations. I, for some reason, could not separate annotations from an annotated bibliography when I was beginning to design this assignment. And so it took until my professor said, so how would you define annotation for me to go, oh, Maybe I don't know. And that's definitely okay because we're all still learning as graduate students what terminology really is versus what we assumed it was. Um, and so I began looking at research and I do have the research tagged on the next slide. So if you're reviewing the slides on your own, they are tagged and linked on the next slide. But for right now, I just have my definition. Um, so th through the research of Carol Porter O'Donnell, Matthew Brown and Jose Vaguera, I have deduced the definition to annotate means to notate within a reading document to extrapolate upon the ideas that are being presented. I identify that annotations can be written in various forms, such as further definitions, emotional appeals, or arguments with or against what was written. 
Um, and what is notated within the document is typically based upon the reader's needs. Written in the early 2000s for their rhetorical audience of high school teachers, both Porter O'Donnell in Beyond the Yellow Highlighter, Teaching Annotation Skills to Improve Reading Comprehension, and Brown in I'll Have Mine Annotated, Please, Helping Students Make Connections with Text, both describe how to teach the annotation process to students, which I've learned is a very valuable lesson. Um, Brown expands upon this concept by articulating that annotations can provide definitions on terms students were unaware of, give them background knowledge on specific traits, explain what is occurring within the text, it allows them to outline it if they need to outline it, um, and it points out the use of liter literary techniques that they weren't aware of and it allows them to apply it to the text. Um, and they can use humor to re and reveal the connections of the text back to themselves. In connection to Vigera's research, Good Readers, Good Writers, Collaborative Student Annotation for Invitation to a Beheading, he discusses the usage of the annotations, allowing the reader to further comprehend the complex text they were assigned, such as 20th century Russian literature, which is not an easy form of literature to get through. Um, with his approach to the assignment, Bagheera assigns his students separate chapters and requires that they annotate their reading to the extent of an anthology editor. And he reports that within the, his conclusion that his students found this task to be a great motivator when approaching very dense works, and it allowed them to think more critically towards their own readings. And that is my quick literature approved literature review. So is there any questions so far about my quick terminology? I'm assuming not because they're very quick. And these are my links. These are JSTOR articles. So if you have access to JSTOR, you're able to view those. And so now this is my task. So last semester, I was able to intern inside a writing proficiency course. We call it a WP course at Stanislaus. And I was assigned to work on a project to create an annotation activity using the current team-based pedagogy that was implemented in the classroom into an annotation activity. Um, and my professor, Dr. Davis, asked that I find something that we could do that also is included within our Canvas LMS and uh, that allowed students to bridge the gap of understanding how to read through a research article in preparation for a literary analysis research paper. They were reading based, their readings were either on passing or it was on the portrait of, um, I'm now blanking on that one, so I will share it later if you guys have further questions on which one it was. Um, for the most part, the task itself focused on an article for passing, so that's why I probably remember that one. Within this overview, I'll give a quick introduction to who my participants or my teams who were in the classroom. I'll discuss why we chose hypothesis and why we stuck within Canvas, and then we will also go over the tips and tricks of how I learned how to use hypothesis in Canvas, and then share a little bit about our hypothesis assignment prompt. All right, so my teams. So within my WP course, there contained 22 students that were divided into five teams. From my 15 weeks of class observations, I had sat with, I had sat with the teams at least once and observed their behaviors and their team group dynamic in person, as well as reviewed how their teams discussed via the discussion posts. Overall, I was impressed with the level of collaboration each team provided to one another, because I also know that personally that would have been a very difficult task for myself if I was in their shoes years ago when I was in my undergrad. Um, I enjoyed seeing how these students with varying personalities types worked together to create deep critical thinking and application to the literary approaches as they were going through the semester. And so our first team, which is Fazam, it was the first letter of all their names combined into one name. So Fazam was a team I was actually nervous about because they were very strong independent thinkers within this group. And so a lot of times I had the fear like, oh no, are they going to are they going to have a conflict in communicating nicely to each other? Um, and that was just initial thoughts from my early observations. But as the semester continued, I was actually very shocked and very relieved that my initial assumption was very incorrect. It is because they were very strong independent thinkers that they actually benefited each other. Okay. Um, if you copy paste it, it should lead you to that. Um, anyway. 
if it really is a struggle, let me know for other folks out there. I'll, I'm going to try it right now. Okay. I was like, see what happens. Yeah. Let me try it. <laughs> and we'll see what happens. Otherwise I will just post it. So post it into a browser and it should work. Cause I just did it uh, myself. It's in Canva. So cut and paste the, the, the text and then open up, up a browser. So it's not a direct active link. That is correct. It's not an active direct link, but if you'll cut and paste it, post it in your browser, you should be able to get to it. Okay. You can save it and I promise you can do it most likely at another time when you're able to do things. Um, okay. So if with Pazam, I was very excited when I when this assignment came up just because I was intrigued on how they would talk about the article together. Um, in my next team, we have the Literature Loving Ladies. This was a team of four students who demonstrated a work ethic of a second to third year undergrad, which is basically where you want the students to be when they're entering in their writing for pro proficiency course. Um, I enjoyed observing this group because they appear shy at first, but then once they start talking, they blow your mind with the connections that they're able to make within the literature that they were being supplied. And in application to the assignment, I did not feel like it would be a difficult task for them to hang off of each other within the discussion. So I had high hopes for this group. In our next group, it's called Redacted. It is not me trying to hide their name. They actually chose the <laughs> format of their name, which is Redacted. Um, this group of four was a mesh group of various thinkers. Um, due to responsibilities outside of their cl the classroom, though, this group's attendance often left members sitting by themselves in class. But through their online discussions, each student also contributed their thoughts so that whoever was representing the, the group for that day, they had other people's information. Um, and so they weren't necessarily alone, but they were alone when they had to present the group's discussion. And then we have the readers, which is my other group of five students. And from class observations, there was also the similar strain I had seen in Pazam. But this one, within this relationship of the group, the they were very cordial to one another, but you could tell that it was a very tested and you had to be very sensitive on how you talk to one another. So there was a lot of tension within that group when they discussed um, items together. And then the last group is called the Rough Writers. Um, this is a group I had to sit with a lot throughout the semester because they had a interesting group dynamic. Uh, within this group, there appeared to be a very popular leader and their opinion was the ultimate opinion, which didn't bode well for the other three members. Um, by mid-semester, a lot of them just left the work to the very strongly opinionated leader of the pack. Um, but the thing that I learned as I was sitting with the group is that he was, they weren't really the, they weren't providing the best I, like identification within the discussions that we were hosting in class. And it was very narrow. It wasn't open broaded. It wasn't open to hearing other people's experience when they were going into this. So I do know like this was the group that I always questioned how it would go, but as we'll talk later, we'll see how they did. Um, and so those are my five groups. They are the teams within the team-based pedagogy. And yeah. I believe my professor at the beginning of the semester did discuss um, general ground rules for the functioning of the groups. Majority of the time, it was talking about being respectful. Um, if they had any big issues, they of course could turn to him or turn to me as I was the TA for the class. Um, but overall, they all had the understood understanding like, hey, we're not gonna be mean to one another. There's no point to be mean in this classroom. And even though there was some tension, it wasn't enough to where it would cause further issues outside of the classroom. So I'm very thankful nothing escalated. And then, um, but yeah, as far as general ground rules, they were just to work with each other. They were stuck with each other for the rest of the semester. So it was, you are in this group, try to see what you can do to make it work. So it was a good um, professional development tool at the same time, because we all have to get into experiences where we have to work in a group and we may not like the person, but we do have to be respectful and cordial. So I do believe that was my professor's intention at the beginning of the semester. Um, is there any, you're welcome. <laughs> Alrighty. And so now I get into talking about why we chose Hypothesis and Canvas. So, 
very frankly, Canvas is our LMS on campus. A few years ago when I worked in the Office of Information Technology and I was an undergrad, there was five different LMSs on campus. And then eventually they shifted, thankfully, to just focusing on one. Um, and so this kind of is a very simple, we chose Canvas because it's our LMS. But in addition to that, my professor and I wanted to ensure that the design of this assignment didn't require students to have to go outside of the database or the learning management system, because it just, it would make it complicated, it would make it hard on us. And as I'm sure there was um, an equity talk yesterday, that would have been great to talk further on this one. Um, but it, it helps with keeping everything concise. It keeps everything simple without having to make the students do extra work or the instructor do extra work to make the assignment work. Um, and as I stated on the slide, it's easier to assess and access, which is a good key time. Um, let's see. So yes, so it basically also allowed the assignment to be carried into future courses, which was a benefit for me doing the work for my professor as it was my project for him. Um, it allows him to be able to use this in his future WP courses if he keeps the selection like the same section. Um, for the majority of the time, or actually last week, he did inform me that he did reuse this assignment again. Um, and he agreed with a lot of my reflections that I will talk about later on. And was able to use so I'm glad that the assignment didn't just work for one semester but was also beneficial this semester for his other second class and then as for using hypothesis well it's an annotation tool as we all know um, it's also a free tool via our canvas uh, uh, access and so we were very excited to try that out and another reason we liked hypothesis was it also allows students to see how other students are reading through a research article for our purpose. Um, and it's something that I am excited to use next semester in my first year composition course, as we will be doing it with the syllabus, as we'll be doing it with our weekly reading so that students can learn from others and myself how to go through a reading assignment in general. And so we were very excited to use this. And then I will quickly try to go through this as fast as I can, because I'm sure a lot of you may already know how to go and add this as an assignment. Um, and if you don't, then I'm glad I can present that for you. Um, so from my research among, from among our Office of Academic Technology website, as well as Hypothesis website, I was able to identify that in order to assign a document using Hypothesis, the instructor will need to create or edit the assignment, input their assignment directions, and then under submission type, use the external tool to locate hypothesis. Then in step two, the instructor can upload a document through the tool and they can use a link as in a URL, a Canvas page, a JSTOR article, YouTube, Canvas file, Google Drive, or OneDrive. Yes, thank you. Um, and so there's various forms that you can use this for. Once they upload their document, then they will be have the option to have Hypothesis assign the document to groups, which is what was very key for our study and for my assignment, um, was to keep the assignment within the group so that the literature loving ladies didn't read the readers and the readers didn't read the rough writers and the rough writers didn't read Fazam. It was everyone got only got to see what was in their group. The thing that I had to learn through multiple attempts though was this is the only time that the instructor is given this feature to assign it to groups is when you're in that little window trying to upload the document. You have to click that you want to assign it to the groups. Otherwise, you have to do step two again to get to step three. And just to clarify that, we've mentioned this in the other sessions, Perfect. you do need to set up those groups within Canvas before mm -hmm. you, you create the assignment to make that step much easier. And then uh, make sure your, your reading is available also as a Canvas file page or whatever file type. And then when you get to the create assignment place, you're just clicking on things at that point, right? Mm -hmm. And them in. So um, thanks for mentioning that. <laughs> Awesome. Um, and then the last step is the instructor basically, uh, let's see, multiple things open. Then the instructor basically will just have to edit and create the assignment page as they normally would in Canvas and then proceed throughout the assignment by adding a point value if there's a point value or and assigning it to the class and dating it for when it gets posted and all that fun stuff that you normally can do. 
The one feature that I did like about designing this assignment was the using this tool in a new tab feature um, because the tool within the assignment page, and I do believe this is Canvas's fault versus the hypothesis tool fault and the web design feature, um, it was just a small window and you had to use a sidebar navigation to basically see the full annotations plus the, the paper that you were reading. Um, and so it was a very difficult thing. So by opening it just to a new web browse, browser page, it allowed you to see everything clearly and allowed it to be separate from Canvas without leaving Canvas, if that makes sense to you guys. Yeah. I hope so. <laughs> um, and then for the next step is just how to assess within Canvas. It was very simple um, for this type of assessment. I'm just going directly into the assignment itself, and I'm just viewing the student's annotations. I'm able to individualize how I see the student and if there are how many postings that they do. I'm able to just look at the whole group in general, or I'm able to, as I was talking with Gina earlier, we can also use the speed grader to get through that as quickly as possible as well. Um, and so these three, these four steps is very simple. And you can view a student's annotation. You click on the body and you open the notebook and the body is just like a person icon. And then the instructor has the ability to use a drop-down bar to choose your student. If the assignment is set up in groups, the instructor will repeat this step for each team as a notebook is specific to the group only. And then the instructor can assess the assignment, whether it was a participation assignment like this one was, or the students can, or if the students were required to have a specific criteria met, like if they were supposed to identify five things, if they were responding, that can, you know, that is all personal and all that fun stuff. Alrighty. And then, so as far as the assignment prompt, these were the five questions that we gave to our students. It originally was 13. And so um, we got it down to five that just focused on the author's argument, the supporting evidence, the content that would support the student's research, the author's conclusion, and the theoretical framework or approach used within the research. And these were the five questions. I, at the end of my slide, I do list the prompt itself that I typed up um, into Canvas, so you're able to review that at a later time. And then these are our findings for each group. Within Fazam, we were very thrilled with this example. Um, and they were probably my favorite group in general, just because they did it the way that we had hoped would occur. The team demonstrated the best results within the annotation assignment with all five members participating. This team not only responded to the peers annotation, but they also carried a discussion off of their posts. For example, student A annotated, quote, I would challenge this passage because although Claire states that she would not revert what she had done and declares that passing is the best decision she has ever done, her actions do not justify her words. If Claire truly did feel the pain for forsaking her Black identity, then why does she yearn to be embedded in it once more? Claire, Claire clearly expresses to Irene how badly she wants to see them and hear them laugh while referencing the Black community she left. Then in response, student B noted, yeah, absolutely. Passing in Claire's mind is the best way to climb the social ladder, and she doesn't have to deal with the day-to-day -day discrimination that visibly Black people have would have. She gets to create a safe space to bubble, her, to bubble for herself, but this doesn't necessarily mean that she doesn't miss the Black community or want one. And then the best part was student C came in and then expanded even further saying, hi, student A, which is my first student, I agree with you. I, I feel throughout Tate's writing, there are many times that Tate dismisses, dismisses Claire's feelings and thoughts and which is a little bit hypocritical since Tate is arguing that people are scratching the surface and I feel as though she's doing the same with Claire. And then student A responded back to student C, which meant that there was an ongoing discussion and they kept going on, which was basically the best example I can give from this activity. Um, the other group that did a really good job, or not, not a really good job per se, but another group that participated to the full manner like that was the readers. Um, the only downside within their discussion was they focused on just responding to the initial posting versus responding as a group chat. And this was something that I took away going, okay, so let's be explicit next time when we talk about having a discussion and obviously going through a class example, here's how we expect you to mimic this discussion. Talk about what did student A talk about? What did student B talk about? Now add your point versus I agree with you. I agree with you. I like this. This is a good example. How is it a good example? Extrapolate and use 
So use the skills. Thank you. <laughs> and then let's go this way so that we have time for any questions. So the lessons learned that I that I got to experience um, as a graduate student with an internship project as a TA for a first time. Um, the three lessons I took away was one, always test the assignment. I learned that in hypothesis, text image documents are not your best friend because if it's not read as a pure text, the full usage of hypothesis may not be as effective. Um, Unfortunately, we had a 20 page article originally assigned to the students and then last minute my professor switched it to a quick six page article. The six page article had an image in the middle of the page, which then created an issue for us because the students then couldn't highlight or annotate within the text itself because it was a text image. Um, so my workaround was to quickly type it up on a Google Doc, make it accessible, make it the same pages and all that fun stuff. And that took me an hour to fix, but that was after I had already announced the assignment and told students to get into it. And then I was like, this is a little messy. So the lesson learned was always test the assignment. The next one is be sure to understand what you're trying to assign. As I talked about with in my little quick literature review of the terminology, I didn't fully comprehend what it meant to be an annotating activity. And so doing some research and learning what it was was a good step for me. And so it's something I will definitely recommend for anyone that's starting in the teaching field. And then the last one is practice using this within a sandbox. Um, using the tool as it was, was a very learning experience. And so it definitely required me to practice here. It took me a few times to recognize that I needed to assign the group within it, um, within the assignment steps itself. Is there any questions I can answer so far? Because I do know I'm coming to the end. Um, and so if you guys have any questions, please do type them in the chat. I'll try to read and respond as quickly as I can. Um, in conclusion, when reflecting back on what I designed with the support of my professor, I was very happy with the results. By using the new tool hypothesis, I saw how it could be beneficial in developing students' comprehension of lengthy article research articles. Plus, with the features that mimic like a Google Doc, and it functions easy enough for students to work with while also still remaining within the LMS was a very amazing experience and it encouraged students to annotate their readings. Um, if there was any aspect I would change in the future with the specific of this course is I would add the discussion into their annotated bibliographies, which was the next step after going through the annotations itself was to move that into a discussion post so that students could then peer review. Um, overall, I would argument the, argue that the assignment was very successful and it gave students space to practice annotating research articles, to think critically about the application of the research to their own writing and had them practice collaborating within a shared document. The assignment itself did as it was intended and it's because of this handy tool, Hypothesis. Um, I look forward to the day that I get to use this next semester um, and use it in my own classroom. And I thank you all for listening in. And if you can, if you have any questions, please let me know. Well, excellent. We're around the hour, but we can stay an extra minute or two if someone's got some specific questions that they want, they have for Heather Ann. We're happy to stay a couple minutes over. Um, we put the slide deck and I think we put a couple active links. So hopefully everybody has access to that now. I think uh, your project was great, Heather Ann. This is not, you know, this is a new experience for you and you did an excellent job. So we thank you for your diligence and um, the information that you shared. Hopefully all the participants got something out of uh, your study. If anything, we're all students all the time. Um, all right. Well, I don't think anyone has any questions. We did answer everything that we had so far. So we'll let everybody go. Again, thanks for joining, Heather Ann. Thanks for your presentation. Thank you so much.